Thank God it was a scratch. But they tried to kill him. I had a feeling that this was going to happen. It wasn't a feeling. It was more so of a, yeah. But I probably would have mentioned it, but because of what happened to me as well, <laughs> I sort of, yeah, was left. But I knew. But I knew they will not succeed. I knew they will not succeed. I pray that you remain strong, Mr. President. It's astonishing. And, you know, he, you know he, he won't say it. He won't say it, but I'll say it. The bishop would be dead if it wasn't for the intervention of God. And anyone, anyone that knows what happened with the actual blade, it was one of those flip blades that open up to your thumb. And when the guy was gripping and he was gripping it so hard, this, this knife, mm. that he actually re-clipped it so that it, after the first stab in the eye of the bishop, which mm. is why he lost his eye, after that it started to fold in onto the guy's fist as in this blind rage he was attacking the bishop in the neck. The blade wasn't hitting. It was actually cutting the guy's own fingers. Mm. So there was the actual misinformation put out there especially by some media outlets saying that the uh, members of the Syrian church had cut his fingers when actually it was the perpetrator himself mm. that cut it. And you don't hear that clarification. There's no fact check from the Australian Associated Press cowards about any of that. They just come after people like me and these, those on the show like Natalie Doomer and, um, and some of our other guests like Jeff Grimshaw. But the bishop almost died, if not for an act of God, when he held up his actual cross, it actually... It, that was what hit the actual um, knife at the moment that he was holding the trigger on the... Um, I'll bring a knife in one time if it's not illegal. I'll show you exactly <laughs> what happened with each stab. But um, mm. the bishop, yeah, pointing out, I would not be here if it wasn't for God. And similarly, Donald Trump would not be here if it wasn't for him tilting his head, as I showed at the start of this. Guys, by the way, before I get the panel to weigh in on that, I am still monitoring this. Trump's son is now on right now. It's slowly crescendoing to Donald Trump himself. I am mm. keeping uh, a close... Look at people calling me during a live stream like I don't know I'm live streaming. Um, I, maybe uh, maybe I w they want to get on air. Mate, mate so I, honestly, I don't know what it is. It's dead silent when I'm not streaming, but the moment I'm streaming, I get a week's worth of messages and calls, and it's like, what the hell is... No one's calling me. What and the... I, and I, it's lovely people. I pick up the phone, I'm like, you do know I was recording then? And they're like, oh, I didn't know... And I'm like, <laughs> anyway, it's all good. Uh, no, no, you know, I get it. Uh, you know, not everyone watches. It's all good. It's if you want to call me, my phone's here. Yeah, yeah. So what did you, uh, anyway, what did, what did you guys have? Do you guys have any thoughts on um, any of that? Well, uh, look, I will just say, I do think that we are at a, at a point in modern Pretty Western normal. history where there are some very evil forces at work trying to bring society away from what I would call a, a, cr a created order more powerfully now than they have been in a very long time. The family is being undermined. Um, notions of, 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 of sex and sexuality uh, that are foundations of family, that are foundations of flourishing societies are being undermined now more than ever. And I do see this not just as a political fight, but I actually do, I mean, I am a Christian, and I believe that there is more to reality than what we can, than what you can poke a stick at. And I think that there is a spiritual battle going on. And I do see Donald Trump as the one who God seems to be using to do some very positive things to push back what I would call some pretty satanic tendencies and satanic forces that have emerged over the last 30 years. And some of it is just outright satanic devil worship witchcraft, neo-paganism. Uh, these are things that over time corrupt and immiserate a society. And, and I do see Donald Trump as probably the most powerful force in my lifetime of being able to stave this off and also give immense confidence to a counter movement who have been trying to fight all of this stuff for years, but have just had very limited success. And I think the Ro overturning of Roe versus Wade um, 
is m maybe sort of a, the central event in all of this so far. That's not an argument in favour of miracles. I know those who don't believe are not going to be convinced by what I say, but from my perspective as, as a Christian, that is how I see things. Yeah, look, th these things have been happening, as you mentioned, for, for a long time. And, you know, I was one of those people that was kind of ignorant to it or just um, wrote it off as, uh, you know, that's just, it's not what it seems to be. Um, and, and for me, it was the, the COVID area that really kind of showed me what they were trying to do, the way they, you know, locked us up. I think the lockdowns were a really great example because they, they locked us into areas, then they tried to separate us from community groups, from churches, from family groups. They tried to isolate us and break us down because that's the way they got most of the people to comply because if you can separate people from your support base, and the traditional support bases are your family, then your church, then your communities, and then it becomes the wider community. If you can break all that down and separate people, then they become more malleable, they mm. become more susceptible to suggestion and coercion and, and these sort of things. And then, then it's um, highlighted all these other things that have, that have really been happening now. But then when you look at it, look back you can see that they they didn't start here mm. i'm just noticing it here it was happening back here mm. um and and again that's why we need to kind of step up and, and talk about these things and that's also why they're bringing in a lot of these new legislation such as mis and disinf disinformation and because they don't want us talking about us they do want to separate us um and and they bring they use the idea of um, safety and convenience, but it comes under the, the banner of control. And, mm. um, and it is, there, there is 